click. Not for me. And we're live. It is Saturday, January 9th, 2021. I, I've, I'm having trouble with this year. 2020, we just pronounced it 2020. Is this 2021? Is it 2021? Is it 2021? I don't like this, uh, the pronunciation of this year. Many other things may be good about this year, but I'm not gonna get used to how to pronounce it. Um, I am back on Facebook. The president is not back on Twitter. And we are gonna have a rip-roaring discussion of content moderation <laughs> as pertains to uh, two roughly similar characters, Benjamin Wittes and Donald J. Trump. <laughs> we may throw in a little bit of Sidney Powell, a little bit of POTUS, a little bit of Mike Flynn. Wait, what happened with Sidney? Oh, we'll get there. They were okay. all banned. Um, oh, but, I didn't know Sidney Powell got banned. Okay. Yeah, Sidney Powell got banned. Uh, Rudy Giuliani did not, at least not yet. But I, uh, I do think in the spirit of things that we should not forget that this is all about me. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I it took me, what, wait, what episode? It's, it's 289 days and you finally admitted it. So <laughs> yes, uh, it, it is, it is, um, you know, we like, we try to put on a, but look, I mean, I got banned from Facebook the same day the president Twitter account it's finally came down. You don't think that is an accident, do you? It shows that the social media world understands that we are roughly parallel important presences. Um, all right, so um, we're going to bring um, Lauren up to talk about this because Lauren was the victim of a uh, a, a drive-by shooting or a, uh, uh, that's by, not no don't say that because that's not what happened Facebook. she was the victim of a of a of an accident she got lumped she was, into our she was collateral damage as the military yeah, she was collateral damage hello lauren hi, hi. friend hi right. nice so to see you we can Good now we can, we can now reconstruct <laughs> precisely what happened yesterday <laughs> yeah. so you messaged me earlier in the day Right before so, this, so let's start there. No, no, let's, let's start, start with, with let's start with the posting of yesterday's show. So there are oh, yes, three I guess that's true. moderators of the In Lieu of Fun Facebook page, and they are me who set it up, Lauren who uh, runs the In magnanimously Fun. volunteered to help run it. Yes, who is our, <laughs> our, our audience member volunteer who runs both the Twitter feed and the uh social uh, and the facebook page um and kate who has never done <laughs> touch the page who hasn't done way, i have no idea yeah but yeah who is like... uh, a, a manager on the page so at uh one or two o'clock yesterday afternoon i posted today's sh uh, yesterday's show which contained the precisely identical wording for the introduction uh, as it did on YouTube, uh, and it basically said, um, uh, Adrian LaFrance uh, 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 talks QAnon, um, and then had a description of Adrian's bio. It was fairly anodyne. Uh, I may have put a joke in there about whether she was going to say whether she was a lizard person or not, but that you was... You did put a joke in there. You may have hashtagged person. the QAnon as well, which I... I'm not sure. You did have yeah, to that, help that may on. have been been the mistake. <laughs> I mean, no, these are like not details to overlook, but we'll get into that later. But yes, like that's so, that's how it that's how it went down. So, um, uh, I did not notice, but uh, we got wrapped up in a uh, very quick. Uh, yesterday was what the QAnon folks would call the storm, although it was not the one they were expecting. It was the day that all of their social media accounts disappeared. Um, and um, uh, and apparently they used at least uh, Facebook, although not uh, YouTube or Twitter, used some quite crude uh, metrics uh, and and searches in order to do it. 
they took down uh, my Facebook page, the In Lieu of Fun Pace Facebook page, and poor Lauren's <laughs> Facebook page. And for those of you who don't know, there is actually something quite special on Lauren's Facebook page because Lauren has used her Facebook page Amazingly. to live stream comments and thoughts and feelings and uh, uh, for every, literally every day for more than three years. Um, and so there was a actually a body, unlike my I Facebook said, page, which has nothing on it. Uh, Lawrence actually has something on it. Sorry, I've go ahead. Saying, I've been saying that I just have to see that my thousand days of live streaming is over on Janu uh, January 25th. So I keep joking that I just have to survive democracy by five days. Like that's my big, <laughs> been my running joke. And I almost did And then you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you almost didn't. So... Um, um, Let's start and, with so, like. So, let, so when when no, did you with, notice like, that your page was yeah. down? Yeah. So I like review um, my. Well, I, I I usually review my my memories because it's my last two live streams. Like in the morning, I have a thing where I'm like you know consolidating my content. So I usually just listen to that live stream that I did a year ago and two years ago to sort of like see how my how I developed as a human. So I did that in the oh, morning. That's really interesting. Yeah, it's very fascinating to watch yourself in the first place and never mind from, you know, a year ago and then a year, two years ago. So um, I did that. And then, you know, I don't I don't actually spend a lot of time on Facebook, but I just usually go there to create my content. Um, and sometime in the middle of the day, uh, it must have been just, you know, sort of right after you've made that post. They must have done it really rapidly because I went to log in and it just said, your account has been disabled and it said you violated well it said here are the community standard like the reasons why your account may be disabled and one was impersonating someone else and i was like i've literally shown my own face on this thing, <laughs> like you know 983 straight days like, yeah you were hint, you were you thought that you got it taken down for impersonating but it's just because that is listed in, in right under yeah this well it's actually because they figured out that you were a lizard person <laughs> lizard person impersonating <laughs> somebody named lauren roberts but what this was whole really time, crazy, if you've just been honest about being a lizard person. Yeah, that's right. I know. I, I should be more authentic. But um, what was really amazing was like I went to upload. So they're like upload your ID. So then I'm like, well, oh, now I have to give Facebook my ID, you know, to get back to get my account back. But it bas it said if you don't do this within 30 days, your account will be permanently deleted. So I was like, shit. So I went to the page to do that, and as soon as I typed in my phone number or my email associated with my account, they said, you can't even do this review process because you have violated our community standards. This is a permanent uh, ban and like basically SOL. And so like for me, I, like, so I, I messaged Kate at some point, like what the, you know, she's like, of course the first person I think of, like when I get banned, I'm like, I'm racking my brain of like, I, I say just the, the most, I mean, I posted something the other day that said, like, call me a snowflake. I don't care. I care about other people. And I'm like, did they ban me for saying call me a snowflake? Like, I don't know. What did I do? So, um, yeah. And I got your text and I, or you, I got your DMs and I was like, oh, like, this is completely crazy. And I, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, huh, this is weird. And you were like, you sent me some screenshots and I was like, this is even weirder and kind of. I was the the kind of the the inability what was fascinating to me was the inability to like here is what you should do to fix this and then yeah. you can't even, fix this because here is what you there's did there's nothing right right, right. And, yeah I mean, and didn't tell me what I did right didn't say what standard I violated or what post it was the no the the funniest thing about the whole thing that was so Facebook about the the, the so they basically said if you don't know Ben Wittes and Ben Wittes doesn't know someone up higher up in Facebook like you're shit out of luck right you're out of your account forever and what what was so funny is that it changes your avatar on the login to just like the blank avatar you know it basically wipes out your content so it was that little avatar but then in the corner it showed me how many notifications I had. Like just you can taunting, see me. Like, all you of can the never people. get back in your account, but you should still want to. You should it's still the window, want to. <laughs> it's the window in your jail cell. Right? Yeah, exactly. So, 
I didn't know about so any you of wanna, this. Should I, stay, should I save all my commentary on what's actually happening to the end? Yeah, let, okay. let's get through the narrative. Yeah. And then... So, sure. anyway, so, then, then take then no- I'm listening. I'm just going to go get a p- pad so I can, like, take some notes just so I can remember what to say. All right. So, I did not know about any of this because Lauren got in touch with Kate, but not with me. I think... I don't know if I would have figured out that it was connected to and little yeah. fun. It took me a but while into the at show. Four, at four fifty, I log in to get ready to do the <laughs> oh, and we're live on Facebook, and I realize that my Facebook account is uh, banned. So I tell Kate, "Well, is the in lieu of fun page down?" And she verifies that it is. <laughs> And then she said, oh, and Lauren got in touch with me earlier today. Her face, her page has been taken down. And so just as we're about to go live, I realize that the I... The important part here, too, is that I... Sorry, not to be disembodied voice, but I have my headphones in. Was that I didn't get banned. This That's is right. critical. Kate did not like, get banned. I was never banned. I never touched anything. And I was listed as a manager on this page and should have been banned. Right. Sorry. So if you want to get somebody banned... <laughs> list her as a manager on the page and get her to interact with the page even in a in a in a anodyne sort of way um and will and that'll that'll do the trick um so as we are about to go live kate uh texts her friends a a contact a contact contact let's say a contact and i emailed one of my contacts at facebook who was very amused by the whole thing by the way (laughs) Um, and um, then we did the show and shortly after we did the show I tweeted about it now for those of you a lot of you know me from Twitter originally uh, I have a big Twitter presence I do not have a big Facebook presence and so Facebook probably banned my account and banned in lieu of fun without having any idea that I was a public persona. Um, That, I think, came home pretty hard when people started tweeting about it from the show, Mike Godwin and Big Blue Blogger, and then when I tweeted about it, and and, uh, David Bott, and then I tweeted about it, and people, you know, started getting amused, and all of a sudden about eight people from Facebook DM me on Twitter, and I said to them, you know, heck with me. Lauren's got three years of live streaming on the site. Get her, like, save her account. Uh, You know, I don't have anything of value on Facebook. So uh, they did it real fast and they they corrected it. And so I want to make two observations and then turn it over to Kate. The first observation, and then after we go through this, we should talk about the president. The first observation is I have no problem with their sensitivity being up to 11 and their um, uh, being hypersensitive and, you know, stuff that's QAnon adjacent being invisible until somebody establishes that it's actually Adrian LaFrance talking about reporting rather than, say, somebody pretending to be Q talking about how the storm is coming. I actually don't have a problem with their airing on the side of caution here. Facebook's history on this issue is uh, a big story in airing in the other direction and it's an unfortunate, it's a very unfortunate story and I don't mind actually the inconvenience to me or even to Lauren, although Lauren may feel differently about that. The problem here is that Lauren couldn't get it addressed without me. Right. And that's the problem. And it was that, scary. Like it was, it was, tr- I mean, especially when I didn't know what it was. I mean, once I knew that it was kind of your fault, I figured you'd handle it. But like you say, if you weren't you and if you didn't have the context that you had, you know, right. I've had to, I've dealt with weird algorithmic things before with Facebook and there is no human recourse without knowing someone. And, right. As the day started progressing, I mean, I started realizing all of the things that I have in Facebook. Like, I have things that I was stupid enough a long time ago to use my Facebook login for other things. I was going to buy an Oculus at one point. These are all things that you lose the ability to access 
if you lose your Facebook personal account. I never, never even thought of that, that my Oculus, I, I need my <laughs> Oculus to work out. Oh, yeah. I could have yeah. lost oh, my This ability. is far bigger wow. than it's getting like, locked out of a Facebook account. There's that's, so much. That's really interesting. Yeah. So there's so many groups and so much content. And like, just th luckily I have a page where all of my followers are that I still have access to through my husband because he's an admin on there. But pages that I own for my other businesses were just gone. So like all of this collateral damage that like, like you say, for the, for the average person, I, it, it's. I really got to see like one fraction of what Trump experienced, you know, yesterday, like the emotional sort of just feeling completely locked out and completely helpless uh, to do anything about it. Yeah. So they're like their Facebook was super responsive once it showed up on Twitter um, from. An well, to be fair, I tweeted about it before you did. Before no, no, I, I was going to say and... once I, I, the, the rest <laughs> of that sentence was from a Twitter account with 400,000 followers. Right. Um, right. But there needs to be a process by which somebody like Lauren can get a reasonably expeditious review of what was an honest mistake that frankly, um, I'm glad they're making that mistake now rather than making the mistake of letting QAnon sites proliferate. Like okay. I, I don't have a problem with the underlying policy judgment, though the engineering seems uh, juvenile, but um, uh, like, I don't have a problem with the underlying policy judgment. I do have a problem with the fact that I can get recourse for Lauren in a matter of a relatively small number of minutes, yeah. but that she with, you know, many hours available before, we, you know, Kate and I were aware of it, uh, can't, there isn't even a way that she can ask for a review no and, and by the way yet, lauren posted nothing about right. QAnon. yeah like i i i i, I would i'm not even an admin on that page i'm an editor like I, it's fascinating to me that i got you know pulled down with the page and uh there's yeah it was just maybe they thought you were q <laughs> <laughs> maybe no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kate. Um, yeah, you're you. the content moderation expert. Yeah. Your thoughts. I know. Okay. So I'm trying to like kind of figure out where to start. So I think the way to walk through this is chronological. And the first thing that I kind of want to say is that, Lauren, I'm really sorry that you went through this because of us and because like, and because of everything that happened. Um, I'm really ha Sorry, I'm hearing... Is that a beeping? Oh, it's not my, it's not a beeping. No, in my, it is okay. my I'm like, oven. I thought that there was a it beeping like, and I was like, is, is it my, my fire alarm going off? No, nope, it's okay. my oven like, informing us like, that it has reached its preset temperature. Great, okay. Like, that's much better than my house being on fire. Um, but, like, I did put into the link a really great post from 2016 by Jillian York, who is part of EFF, that talks about exactly kind of what we're talking about, which is, like, the psychological damage that people have from getting banned from Facebook. And people poo-pooed this in 2016. Um, and I'm sure they poo-pooed that idea even more in 2012 and even more in 2008 and then even more in 2004. But all of these things are very real because we have a social, like a social, sorry, we're associated with people on these sites. We have rights that are granted in the sites. It's not just being able to speak and listen. It's community, and it's not a joke when Mark Zuckerberg says that he builds community. You really do. And it's not because of Facebook. It's because of what Facebook does and the way that it does it and how it allows you to have community with real people that you wouldn't connect with. In lieu of fun is a great example of that, although we exist without Facebook because we have like a different type of platform. So I kind of wanted to start there. The second part is that what we would call this is an enforcement error, not a policy error. So, and what I mean to like kind of get into on this is like the underlying policy, as Ben points out rightly, is completely correct mm -hmm. that there was a crackdown on QAnon and specifically on terrorist kind of white supremacy and terrorist activity after what happened on Wednesday on certain types of accounts. And it means that, I just want to be clear that the enforcement of a, like they picked a policy that said, we're going to turn the various types of enforcement up to 11 mm -hmm. instead of having them at like 
four or five. And when I say turn up to 11, I mean the automatic enforcement. I mean things that like scan automatically for hashed like kind of hashtag things because a hashtag denotes that you're trying to reach an audience and Ben I think that you didn't think about this while you were doing it but when you say when you hash something and people click through on a hashtag they see all of the hashtags oh, that relate man, to QAnon. I, do, I use that, Q, that, that the QAnon hashtag on purpose for the same reason later in the day I tweeted uh, nothing I can stop what is coming and because but I wanted some QAnon adjacent the, people to be like, oh, I can check this out and then hear Adrian talk about what QAnon really is. Okay, it was like quite deliberate. Like, I just did. Like, yes, but the meaning of your hashtag is lost in like the scale of what Facebook does. No, of and course. And so like, and right. And like. I'm not like, but like, I'm glad that you say that because it is, was meaningful. You did think about it. That even makes no, my point was, even greater. It which was is quite like, deliberate. I was trying to inject in lieu of fun into the QAnon universe so that we would get three, get or, four, three or four people to show up and watch the show, maybe on YouTube and, um, or maybe show up in Crowdcast and like hear what reporting about QAnon actually shows. And I, I, it, that was entirely conscious on my part. Yeah. I think that, so like, so what happens next is that you have policy errors. There's no policy error here. Everyone is kind of happy with the policy. What happened is the enforcement error. So what's happened, and one of the reasons that now Facebook has 15,000 people that are doing the hard work of like reviewing content um, or were doing that hard work before the pandemic um, is that a lot of these are human calls. They really don't have AI that can do this specifically for this reason. You get overly, you get overly ambitious takedowns and like basically copyright law is like a lesson in this, the notice and takedown regime. But I don't want to really get into a, a, like IP right now, but like Lord knows this too well, but like then like there is, it's, it, it has a massive ability to over censor. And what happened is it got, you, you both are victims of over censoring. Um, what I think is the much bigger problem, and I'm so glad that both of you hit on this as you kind of like are like we're wrapping up, is that the ability to, for you to have due process for your for your for the enforcement error to be fixed was really fast. No, it didn't seem that way, Lauren, but it was really oh, it was. fast uh, comparatively. Yeah, and like for most people they are not connected to fucking someone who knows Cheryl, who knows Mark, who knows, like, not that that's who I called. That's not what I'm saying. But, like, I'm just trying to say, like, that type of level of influence or people who know people. And this is the type of preciousness that when you have kind of these elite communities that are privileged and that's how you're running, a, like, that's how you're running a free expression platform and a platform and a community that is like the politics of the entire world, like that's a big problem. And so I think that like exactly the point about expedit, like this is what I wrote about in 2018. This is like something I highlight. Everyone I talked to was like, yeah, after a lot of work, ADL has stakeholders that have direct lines into Facebook and can get like anti-Semitic shit taken down but like that doesn't change their overall policies and doesn't change like like minute enforcement like against people who don't have connections to ADL and have no way of knowing how to like get their stuff put back up and like the fact of the matter is that like I think it's disgusting and I said this when I got taken down following Kenosha at like on Twitter it's not right that there is a different set of rules for people who look and are me like it's not than a look there are thing. for everyone it's a, else. Honestly, I mean, I just it, like, it, it's, it's not. It's, no, it's it, maybe not a look thing. There but are maybe it's there, not a look thing. There but. are many. There are many aspects of this that are inflected by, you know, race, class, gender. This isn't one of them. This is a public persona versus non-public persona. Lauren is from Facebook's point of view somebody who has no capacity to what? do reputation. Why did I get taken down? As What's an that? admin on that page, I don't think it had anything to do. I don't no, think you I, had accepted. The I think invite. that my page I, I, is flagged as special. No, like I, think, I really do. I don't. 
I, I think, think you it's that you never touched the page. You never accepted oh, really? the invite to be in. I think because you oh, weren't was listed. there acceptance. Okay, I didn't. Yeah. So I, th I like... think I think the algorithm understood that you were an innocent bystander, whereas it assumed that Lauren and I <laughs> were, were both queuing on um, uh, lizard like, people. <laughs> lizard people. Um, so I'm, so all of this is to say is like we have to have like my entire. So one of the things is this is worse because of the pandemic. Um, but why? I don't FY. understand that. It said that on the thing. It because said, you know, they preferred a ton. They've done huge takedowns on AI. And so they front load a lot of stuff. And they simply don't have the numbers of people hire to go people. through takedowns anymore. What, they don't they have enough money? They can't hire people because pe No, 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 no. So when you review content, because it's because it's private oh. and because you're reviewing other people's shit, you have to be in-house oh. and you have to be there and you're on a special computer that has a special screen that can't be photographed from any angle. And mm. that's what content moderators have to review things on because they are looking at nudity and pornography and graphic mm. violence and like other types of private stuff that mm. like would violate various rules that like, and laws that like, that the, the these sites have to abide by. That they can't sense. do any of that work remotely They've like, so I don't know if you were watching, but like at the beginning of the pandemic, my mind, like, I think we talked about this, but it was way early. It was like March or April. They put, they sent all of their workers home with pay. And just like, you don't have to do any work. We, they just paid all of their workers and were like, we're going to keep paying you, but like, you don't have to do any work. And they brought in like a shoestring crew to work remotely on like basically just escalations of violence. And that was it. And like, what, things what's like interesting that. about the psychology that you said, you know, like the psychological sort of trauma of it is that it would have been a completely different experience for me if Facebook had said, even if they had said, we'll get to this in six months and we'll figure this out or something versus saying you have no recourse and we're not telling you why this happened. The, the, the emotional sort of response was completely different for me. Like I, I, I would have been okay if they had said, if they had explained why they can't have people content moderate, because that didn't make any sense to me, because I didn't know that they had such, you know, requirements, which makes sense when I hear about them. But the idea that it's just final with no information was the thing that was the most sort of damaging emotionally. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, that you had a body of work yeah, like I connected have, to that account. Like that right. was. You should download the fuck out of that. Oh, I, I do have. Every, I have, do have all the videos downloaded, but I have so much content in groups and so many groups of people who I don't have. I know so many people. I realized yesterday on Facebook that I met them there, and I don't know them anywhere else, and I don't know their phone numbers, and I don't, you know. So now I have all this work to do about around like sort of yeah. gathering my Facebook life up because it made me. I mean, it was actually a really good experience for me, although I, it was I, stressful. I, I have exactly one person in my life who I am only connected to on Facebook. Yeah, I have hundreds it, probably. It, it is a person, uh, and uh, if you are watching this SD, you know who you are. This is a person who used to work for a ride-sharing company in Washington uh, and who uh, I met in a... Uh, ride and she was an executive of the company um, and uh, she we had a conversation it was a very interesting conversation and she thought I was interesting uh, so she used the uh, tools of the ride-sharing company to stalk me and hunt me down and uh, got in touch uh, if um, and um, we have been friends ever since um, and she now lives abroad and we are in touch almost entirely uh, on Facebook. And yeah. I woke up this morning and sent her a note that said, hey, mm -hmm. uh, we should be in touch by other means because yeah. I can't, like, I wouldn't want to lose touch with you because right. we're... I mean, I don't have Lauren's information. I was literally thinking as we were talking, I was like, oh, I should give Lauren my phone number. Like, there's just like, this is just like crazy. Like, this is stupid. Um, but the, right. one of the things... One of the but, last things I want to say is that, like, we've talked a lot about our experiences, but the one thing I do want to say is that there, there's, like, an entire world in which Facebook is not 
the top of the tree. It's not the leaves. It's not the things that you see. It is also the trunk and the roots and everything all the way down. And what I mean by this metaphor is that it is the internet. Yeah. It is if you are not in just Myanmar. like it is just not like it is not the right. platform in which you like see things. It is like everything that runs, everything that makes it it's so the that whole you can see stack. things. Exactly. And so like basically like this is a problem. You think this is a problem for people like us and we at the very least like what if our government services were based on like our government having a fucking Facebook page and I would like alert them to an outage through Facebook and Facebook decided to cut off my internet or ban my feet like that's like it is literally state action doctrine shit it is not Josh Hawley shit don't listen to him but it is state action doctrine shit and like this is crazy um and I think that like I think that we should be having this conversation um and for those of us who have been doing internet speech and trying to get people to take it seriously for the last five years today and yesterday have been like I'm not gonna gloat <laughs> all, all of which like... all of which is a great segue <laughs> Uh, to the other person who was removed from social media yesterday, Someone in addition to Lauren, yeah, I mean, in addition yeah, Lauren, to the, got taken the poor down. in lieu of fun <laughs> page with its 50 followers. Yeah. No, it reached 50 today. Oh, okay, we got it. Um, okay. Yeah, we got to 50. By the way, if you guys are on Facebook and are not following the in lieu yeah, of fun Yeah, Lauren's great. Page, I don't you, follow her because I don't go should, on Facebook for professional reasons, but yeah. Um, uh, so, um, uh, you know, Twitter, uh, actually banned the president of the United States, which, uh, of course there have been many jokes about, um, uh, my favorite, um, so far has been that, uh, uh, for uh, tweeted by, uh, w what I expect to be an observant Jew <laughs> that, uh, the, the um, uh, that having the president off Twitter gives uh, non-observant Jews a flavor of what uh, uh, Saturdays are like for, <laughs> for observant Jews. Um, um, uh, um, I'm uh, uh, fascinated, Kate, by the question of your reaction to this and do you think that this is a defensible b obligatory c an assault on free speech um what's how do you i mean, i've seen i've been, I've been watching your tweets about it um but i'm curious if you were twitter would you have done something similar to this and when yeah i'm First of all, I want to say that, like, I think that I'm not one of the people who thinks that this should have been done so much earlier. And actually, I'm hoping we can talk about this on Monday. Jock Balkan's coming on, um, and he is really eager to talk about Wednesday, actually. But then also wants, you know, he's actually the perfect person for Monday because he'll talk about, he can talk so eloquently about Wednesday and what happened and impeachment and, like, the federal kind of scene and political science and then, like, this digital speech stuff. Okay, but the tr like Trump being banned in my mind, and I think this kind of like says like how differently I think about kind of the, the ecosystem of speed than other people is like, when that happened, I was like, oh, okay, like that happened. It wasn't a should or should or could or would or, it was like they did, like they did it. Like that was all that mattered. Like it was like they can and they did. And so now what is the next move? And like the next move is like, and so like, what is the fallout of that? So the fallout of like, I don't really kind of care what the should they have or was that the right move? They did it. What's interesting to me is that, and I think that there are very compelling reasons um, that were based in like the facts of like the last three days before they banned him that show that he was like, doing things that were inciting violence, which is exactly the type of stuff they take down all the time. So there wasn't even that inconsistent with anything that they like had said, so fine. 
But he is the world leader, which they've made a huge exception for. I've talked about this a lot, like public figures and political figures and speech and online speech, and it's hugely relevant. And they kind of, as an exception for all of these platforms. So they have all of these, so all of these platforms have exceptions, or excuse me, they have rules. And then they have exceptions for like the main rules that are like, if you're a public figure or if you're uh, like a political figure, and those are completely dictated by their own terms and their own decisions about what is political enough and what is public enough um, to make you that and to do that. And obviously, Trump is a huge figure, and so this is a huge move. And so, like, I guess my thoughts immediately went to kind of being like, what is going to be the fallout for this um, politically and for speech? And what is it going to be? And I think for me personally, I just was kind of like, this is going to be the thing one of the huge things that makes everyone sit up and take note that this is a serious discipline and that this is a serious moment um, of understanding how these corporations work and that it's not that they are they are establishing if it in with all in all seriousness they're they're basically laying the they're laying down law like i don't know how it's distinguishable from actual law is like and so like you know just because it's a corporate policy does not make it indistinguishable from like something that a state government would be doing to take down like before the state was such a powerful actor that them passing a law would have the effect of what Twitter had done. And now Twitter is on the same level, if not higher than, in terms of like silencing or not silencing people, the state. And so like, that doesn't mean that we should take them seriously as a state actor, but it does mean that like, we should take seriously what they're doing. But can I ask a question about this? Because it seems to me that if, tw and, and the poll is up for all on when Twitter should have taken down the account, if at all, um, so it seems to me that the, the question is, is more complicated as a result of Apple's action against Parler, right? So oh, if that is, and Google, yeah, right. Yes. So, so if, if you said, well, you can't say what you want to say if you're a violent racist or an authoritarian who happens to be president on uh, Twitter. So what? You go to parlor. Um, then you would say the free speech implications are really nil, right? You never had a right to speak your mind in a private setting in violation of the rules of that setting, and you don't now. But if all the private settings team up against certain points of view, and let's stipulate that the point in view in question here is actually worth suppressing, um, but um, I do think that raises the question of what other much more unambiguously constitutionally protected uh, unpopular forms of expression, the combination of Twitter and Apple and Google and Facebook could sort of team up to remove from the conversation. And I'm not sure that bothers me all that much because I do think if you're, um, if you, like, if we believe in the private, public-private dichotomy, and you say, well, the internet is largely privately honed, um, well, the amalgamation of private actors all having their own kind of values or values as inflected by corporate interests or corporate interests, uh, you know, that's, the, that's actually the world we live in. And you know, when I worked for the Washington Post, I didn't get to, like, write the Communist Manifesto on the editorial pages of the Washington Post. I didn't want to, but I didn't, you know, I never kidded myself that that was, like, within the realm of the discretion that, that Don Graham gave me. And um, similarly, people should understand that when they go on Twitter, they, you know, they get to 
they get to say their piece within the confines of the terms of service and not outside the confines of the terms of service. And by the way, if you, the only protection of the First Amendment is that it doesn't prevent you, is that you cannot be stopped from going out in the public square and speaking or publishing your own views. That's the only protection the First Amendment gives you. So Kate, I'm curious what you think is like, is if all the social media companies and up and down the stack and all the, the tech companies and Apple for the Apple store and Google for the Google store say, hey, this is out of bounds. Does that bother you from a free speech perspective? Or is that just companies doing, doing what companies do? It is both. It is both companies doing what companies do. And it bothers me from a free speech perspective. Because like it is companies doing what companies do. And everyone who's in the chat being like, these are private companies. They, yes, they can do whatever the fuck they want. That's not what I'm saying. Like, currently, yes, they can do whatever the hell they want. What I'm saying is it is time we rethink that dichotomy. Because there is and has long been like a blurring of lines in the public sphere between like what a public space is to have conversation and that you have a right to have conversation to. We never, I don't think we correctly kind of like kind of conceptualized it in the early days of the internet and, or fully appreciated its potential. And I think that like finally we're, I really hope that we're in a moment where we are realizing its power and potential. And we realize that like, you can't get rid of the companies. Like even if you broke them up, I'm sorry, everyone is like putting like, like everyone that's like putting monopolies and everything else into the chat like i get it. like you can break them up and there will be other things that rise into this space There'll be these things you can break up facebook fine i'm like pro breaking like whatever you want to do if you think i don't actually think that will make your problem better but if you want to do that fine my problem is that there needs to be a democratization of these companies as they relate to public rights like well what's amazing to the... me go it's, ahead sorry Lauren. no i didn't mean to interrupt you there no but, no, no. Uh, please go ahead there's just this the, what's so fascinating to me as a content creator on the internet is that tr it, this is donald trump right and he did not choose to just put up a website and publish whatever he wants to publish right uh, maybe then could Cloudflare do that. would have taken him down maybe someone maybe the web hosting but he could have hosted his own he has enough money. He's one of the most recognizable figures on planet Earth. And even he feel must feel some necessity to be platformed on these social media, you know, sites like that's how important it is. You know, it, it's just it's fascinating because we think of like sometimes like, oh, well, the Internet, you know, broadly speaking, is like the common square. And you can go on your own website and say whatever you want to say on your blog or your whatever. But you just you see how critical the the reach of social media platforms is that 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 he tried five different accounts. He he got Gary Cohn's account banned from Twitter for life because he changed the name to Donald Trump and tried to tweet out. You know, he 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 blew through these accounts because he knows that that's how you get to people, which fascinates me uh, from just a like a content reach perspective and what it really means to have the rest of the internet out there or not as a place this to speak. This is not a great diagram, but it kind of gets like, okay, so I'm really sorry to scribble, but like, this is what I teach in my class. There's platforms. And I do want to say that like Facebook, YouTube is part of Google and like this part of the host's problem. And what we have down here, when people talk about the big five tech companies being Amazon Web Service and Amazon, right. Microsoft, Google, uh, and um, oh my God, um, not Twitter. Um, anyways, the big five basically are like are here. These are the big three. It's fa like for speech platforms, it's Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And then for like down here, you have Pipe. It's Comcast, Verizon, and, and Time Warner. And like you go down the stack, and like Ben, to your point, like when you get down, like this is the level we're talking about with Twitter. And this is the level. And the farther down you go is the more restrictive you're getting on free expression. And with like, with the least amount of foresight that what you started out doing 
was going to be about freedom of expression. And like, mm-hmm. therefore, the least amount of like, the least amount of like, I think calculated response and very good response about creating a policy that is smart about freedom of expression or anything else, which is why I think that Apple right now is fucked, um, to put it mildly. So I, I agree that the problem is deeper the further you go down the stack, right? The free speech implications of Comcast saying we will not carry Donald Trump content is very different from and much more troubling to me than Twitter saying, hey, you're abusing our platform. Um, and I, I, you know, really don't have a problem with what Twitter did. Um, and I, I think you, um, you know, you call out a mob to attack the Capitol at your peril on social media. By the way, you do it at the peril of criminal law too, but I don't really see why Twitter should volunteer to be a party to that. Um, And I do- Volunteer to be a party to what? Well, once you've done it once using Twitter, I don't see why they should- Call for a coup. Yeah. Oh, not not call, but like, like, you know, inside the, of riot, the coup's starting now. Like, <laughs> <Right>. please, <laughs> you know, like coup time. <laughs> We're well, like, once you've done that once, I'm really not sure why they should give you like continued service. Um, and I do, you know, the libertarian side of me, which is often well under control, but does exist, you know, says, hey, as a general matter, companies are allowed to refuse service to people and we have we have a few protected criteria in which you're not allowed to do that like you know i don't want to deal with you because you're black that's heart of atlanta motel and the civil rights act of 1964 right i don't want to deal with you there are a few areas where it is contentious no you're allowed to discriminate on viewpoint viewpoint like yes. you can like you yes. cannot violate on category like protected categories Certain and this is discreet- the exact bullshit like sorry i'm like sorry go ahead yeah you're making the same point that i was making <laughs> look i there, think so uh, the general rule is discrimination is allowed um the specific rule is discrimination based on certain protected categories uh gender race national origin, religion, uh, sexual orientation, uh, and sexual uh, 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 and gender identity under the most recent Supreme Court statute, not allowed. Certain, you know, less on, on the basis of the lesser protections on the basis of age and some other stuff. Um, but the general rule is, if I don't want to do business with you, I don't have to. And I actually think that's a pretty good rule because you know, certain kinds of discrimination, like, for example, like discriminating between right and wrong, discriminating well, ben, between opinion and coups. No, discriminate, the like, exact example I use is like Walter Sobchak in Big Lebowski when he's like screaming at the counter and he's like, do you, do you know this scene? Where oh, he's yes. just like, oh, yes. he was like, well, lady, like, he was like, my buddy died face down in the muck <laughs> like and like i if i ever teach first amendment class i'm going to use that example and like as you know the dude is like this is not a first amendment issue walter this is being not very a first undude. amendment issue you're not yeah it's you're being very undued and like yes and then he doesn't say this at the same time it's at another point in the movie is like um you're not wrong walter you're just an asshole and like this is the point you can be an asshole you can be wrong you're just like not allowed to like turn off someone for being wrong and inciting violence like that's the thing well, well but, if, but 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 right that's the issue walter like, who get kicked out if, of that bar but walter not because can, he was a veteran if walter can get way, kicked out is the twi- trick to the first amendment test yeah walter can Sorry. get kicked out of the bowling alley because he's being an asshole and the exact same rule applies to donald trump and twitter um, now, I think the only point at which the, that which this bothers me from a free speech perspective or troubles me, and it doesn't even bother me, is if all the tech companies in the world 
get together and say, you're an asshole, none of us are doing business with you. So you're literally left with what free speech means to such a person is you can stand out on the street and you know, shout through a megaphone or right. hand out leaflets. I think we need to think about, do we want that much power concentrated in Silicon Valley? That's a tricky little question, but no, Milo, we obviously plight, don't. And people the plight of Milo for... Yiannopoulos is not like keeping me up at nights. Even though Lauren was deplatformed yesterday, as was I, and like I am I mean, sensitive to the fact that she might have had trouble getting her account back. I'm still like, you know, hey, over time. The problem with balance of the harms on that, I think from my perspective, was like how I felt as though I could, I mean, there was no risk of me being radicalized by that. But it, in slightly different situation, I could see where my whole view of what, what was being point. said on Facebook and what yes. might have gotten me banned and what where I might be able to go could have easily led you. i mean yeah could have radicalized me in a way uh you know uh, uh, especially if this i were prone that, to that <laughs> especially if i had this been is something who, yeah. right. lauren you saying that is like really interesting because in the early days i heard, used to hear that argument so much more um the argument was that you deplatform these people they find another place to go and the police can't like, surveil them as well <laughs> And as they can when they're on a group on Facebook or like right. or something on Twitter um, and you deplatform them and you make them feel very bad and cut off from people. The other side of it is they really are cut off from people. Right. Like I was just asking like someone who was it just called me asking about a chan and like what that what was going on oh it was jack and it was like asking he was like can you get an a chan i was like no like there's no a chan anymore like it's like a coon and like then you have to like get into this whole thing and it's like you gotta get the ip address and like it's hard there's a lift i don't even know i mean i could do it if i wanted to but i don't even want to so like but it's a whole thing like it's a like and it's very hard to surveil and this has always been a side issue of trust and safety and people who do this in a living is like they know that they're marginalizing people and making when they marginalize those people those people radicalize even more also like they i have like you know, timothy some, mcveigh's in their fucking right. cabins i have some family members who are you know have their views which i don't agree with and when they saw me get deleted from facebook yesterday they started making all sorts of Facebook conspiracies about it, right? Like, and they know what kind of content I post. And so like, it just, it does have implications when you so, like someone said on Ben's Twitter about the, the hammer instead of the knife or whatever, you know, like if it's, if it's going to be this brute force kind of banning right now, like it does, I'm not sure the balance of the harms comes out as clearly. I, I mean, I my gut is like, get rid of the shit that's on there, but also, uh, it, it does, it, it has real consequences. But yeah. thank you guys for taking care of it anyway. I just want to say, you know, it was I'm not really a problem. glad you're I back, a lot. Lauren. I'm, like, I'm sorry back. that happened to you. <laughs> well, it was, uh, it, was it. Um, it was an adventure. It was an adventure. It was just another story to tell. Oh my God. It's like, it's like 555. Yeah, just make sure you back up all your. Uh, I, I mean, Facebook I'm on content. it. I have all these things. I'm going to write a whole article about what to, how to keep yourself you you know, protected from a Facebook. Uh, you should Man. have if you if you haven't if you're not familiar I'm sure my God wouldn't be able to tell you but there's lots of work that like would dovetail with what you're interested in at EFF cool it would be, yeah yeah like, yeah uh, cool yeah it's like right yeah. up your alley all right we'll cool. see you soon thank you so much bye um we have time for a couple questions um I tried to bring Anne K in oh she just says oh. can we try again because she has a conflicting view of deplatforming and uh let's uh let's see if we can make that happen um there she is all right hey hi friend Hello. as always your hair looks divine uh -huh. um yeah so i'm taking these off can you hear me yep great yep you're a little so, soft but we can yeah hear you. i'm i'm just like 
I don't know, maybe it's my age, although I'm not that much older than Ben. Uh, I'm a little more concerned than maybe some people about the power of uh, private individuals to make these decisions. Um, and I think my answer is more regulation so that there are rules or, that they have to follow rather than algorithms or their own views. So let me ask you something. Why does it concern you more than in the era in which we were coming up? Everybody had to go th to, to actually speak in the public sphere. You had to go through an editor, um, uh, like, say, you or me. Um, and there really was no voice that you could have in public except as mediated through equally private entities. Um, uh, it's just that we were used to that, that intermediary actor and the intermediary actor was, you know, a human or a collection of humans rather than a contract as implemented through a set of engineers. Yeah, that's a great question. Probably the toughest one. I mean, a couple, and I'd love to hear your thoughts too, Kate, but a couple of things come to mind. Is this journalism? No. So then what does that mean, right? We were being paid to do our job, Ben, although you could extend it to op-ed writers and letter writers, right? Which would then negate my point about being paid. Um, and then I think this has the potential to be more democratic, small d the social media. Um, and so then the question is how to balance that potential with um, the potential to do real harm by inciting insurrection or, you know, racist uh, speech or something like that. I mean, my, like my, my basic view is I don't think it's that different. You know, it's like I used to be asked when I worked at the post, we would, I would spend a chunk of every day reading op-ed submissions. And there was an entire assistant professor industry that yeah. was devoted to getting me to run their op-eds. And I got to say no to them. And that was the most power I wielded in my life was the ability to be <laughs> like the gatekeeper. That's not at all true, but you okay. Oh my God. I mean, I got but No, but you're this, doing I it was, now. No, no, but like, no, but, 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 I but because of the democratization, Lawfare matters less than the Washington Post did then because there were very few, in 1998, when I went to the Washington Post, the difference between being published in the Washington Post and not being published in the Washington Post was for many people in the Washington area, the difference between being able to speak or not speak. And the person, if it was a legal matter, the person in the way of that was me. And I don't see why that's so different from an algorithm being in the way of it. Um, and by the way, if somebody had sent me an incitement to violence or a you know piece of racist tripe, I would have said, and by the way, did say no. Um, and so I don't really see why it's that different. It's just radically democratized and automated in a fashion that is um, uh, both both allows more, uh, allows much higher volume of consideration and makes some crude judgments sometimes. I mean, and to your point, like, I completely feel this way. Like I felt, so a lot of people have called, I like my, like my article called this the new governors. And I think that's actually like ultimately right. But I think that there's also, one, Rory Van Lu wrote a beautiful um, article called The New Gatekeepers, which is like about the fact that like basically um, corporate entities and like these journalistic entities are the new gatekeepers to journalism. And I think that there is an elitism here that we're settling on as a community and a norms that is like, it feels, I was just saying this, like uh, I just, 
it feels very like Madisonian to me in which like we're settling down like okay well like these people shouldn't be silent and these people should be silent and like you're a fucker who just wants to like trade pork fat for like like pint oh, Ben you're Ben you're you're <laughs> typing it super loud yeah you're really really loud sorry um I know that you're like doing things that are important but like anyways um but like but yes you're completely right there's like this like kind of moment that we're having and I, I think that like <sighs> So the thing that bothers me about journalism is that journalism is an elite group of people. You understand that. Like, you've been inside it. Like, you know that, like, these people are, like, once you're in, you're in. And, like, people make decisions. And Ben understands that. And, like, but the facade or, like, the conceit is that, like, you can continue to, like, kind of, like, take in people's ideas and to publish them and to choose and, like, to, like, do this thing. The thing is about like the thing is that happened with social media was it just blew that all up and gave us direct democracy which is nothing anyone wanted and in fact madison would have like turned his nose up at and that you could have like because <laughs> but seriously because it was like because scary because there was no there was no discernment yeah oh a dog knows that's good yeah but there's like but there's no discernment and so i think that there is i think that there is kind of like what i don't know what's going to happen is like how we're going to recreate that elite on a global scale i think that's going to be really 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 hard and it's like a very good question like who are these people that are going to decide who the people are to listen to when we're a global world when we're a world that like does not just think about like oh whatever the u.s is doing or whatever else i mean i don't even tell you like horrible things that are happening in india like everything will be in context like i don't know like or will it i don't know so and then one last quick thing and this is a practical issue my my first arguments i think were more principled but which is backlash you know um what lauren mentioned in other words the banning right now is tending to be more on the right wing side and we're gonna get you know, who knows what that's gonna result in. Even more anger, maybe more insurrectionist behavior. I don't know. Uh, so that I, I agree I, with. I mean, I, I, I do think, but this is a very old issue in the, uh, in the relationship between law enforcement and intelligence on the one hand and the social media companies on the other, which is that you know, you want certain accounts to disappear um, because they're having major uh, recruiting and operational implications. On the other hand, they're super fun to watch. Yeah. Right. And there's a real there's a real tension between the intelligence gathering interests and equities of the community and the operational uh, desire to disrupt. You know, so you have like, and often the intelligence and and like the operators and the intelligence gatherers have very different attitudes about that, right? And one consideration in that is you are worried about further radicalization of more people uh, by deplatforming. There has yeah. been a request in the in the chat for a Anne, for a thank dog you for coming shirt on. poll yes dog um, shirt dog shirt dog shirt wait 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 hold on no i don't want to have a dog shirt poll this is this is like our private thing ben it's like yeah your, like, it's like uh, your twitter there uh, it's not up for public dog, dog, dog it is not up for public dog shirt is part of the constitution of the show and uh, as long as a uh, lockdown is is here and uh, and quarantine is here, and um, uh, and you know, and I'm doing this. I'm gonna be wearing. I dog love shirts. dog shirt. I mean, um, it's just like like every time you wear a dog shirt, it makes me feel better. So dog Even shirt if is it's just like, like weird it, and nipply. If you don't like dog shirt, if you think dog shirt is nipply and weird, you go watch a different like, show. Relax. 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's just like, go there there are show. many shows to watch at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and this one is no for longer the, the one by the president. Very who soon. Like or at least can at least tolerate dog shirt. Um, uh, speaking of nipply and weird, we need to have Virginia Heffernan, who coined that phrase to describe dog shirt, oh, we back. Do. We should have um, it this week. Or, but we, but who's the who's the mystery guest for tomorrow, Ben? Uh, yeah, uh, that's right. Um, uh, the mystery guest for tomorrow will, of course, be John Legend. <laughs> um, and, um, ah, uh, followed by Chrissy Teigen, who's like, oh my god, she's she's got a great great social media presence. I love her. She's great. So, oh so we're going to have both uh, John Legend and Chrissy Teigen on uh, for tomorrow's uh, mystery guests. Great. Um, that sounds great. I and can't wait. Uh, until then, that'll be 22 hours. I'll prepare and 50, my home studio in like a tiny <laughs> town in Cape Cod. <laughs> 53 from minutes from now. Um, <laughs> and until the no, Taylor Swift can't come on tomorrow. She's going to be Kate's mystery guest uh, next yeah, week. Yeah, it's like future, future, future mystery guest. Yeah. Um, until then. <sighs> um, I am not a, uh, we don't have fun anymore. I am not a Libra, but astrology is bullshit and so is Twitter. So. So it doesn't matter if you get banned from it. Nothing matters. LOL. See you tomorrow. LOL.